Let's talk about the big poll numbers and why at the moment they're sort of useless, but also sort of useful. The reason they're useless right now is because we're seeing a consistent Harris lead, but it doesn't tell us much about who's going to win because it's within the margin of error, so you can't pick a winner from it. Now, we can go a bit further into the places where it really matters, the battleground states, the swing states, and this is the latest polling from this weekend there. Anything on the right in the red here, that shows a Donald Trump lead. Anything on the left in the blue, that shows a Kamala Harris lead. You can see she's doing well in Nevada, but actually the rest of them, the other six, those are really tight. They're within the margin of error, so they could really go out of the way and look at North Carolina there that is a dead heat it really is impossible to say who is leading there and that is all really important for this race to 270 electoral college votes so let's fill in these gray swing states according to what the current polling says start coloring in this map and we see how the electoral college votes go up over there give that to Donald Trump and he's going to Democrats and Kamala Harris there. We've left Pennsylvania and North Carolina. Pennsylvania, we have talked about a lot. We'll keep talking about a lot because it's got a lot of electoral college votes. It's really, really important and it is a swing state. If you give that to Kamala Harris, she gets over that 270 line. She becomes president. But let's say Donald Trump does well. Again, the polling suggests he could do that. If that goes to Trump, it all comes down to North Carolina. That's the state where it's a dead heat, where there's not a lead for any candidate. Give that to Kamala Harris. She is the president on 273. Give it to Donald Trump, and he is president again on 281 electoral college votes. So it all comes down to all these places, very different places too. We can start to think more about how the demographics, the makeup of these places might be already being influenced during this race. So the difference between US and UK elections, if you think of exit polls in the UK, we don't look at things like demographics, whereas in the US they do tend to break it down. They break it down by race too. So let's look at percentage of voting age population that are black. The US average is here, that's 12%. So anything above that is above average. North Carolina is there. Now this is important because black voters tend to vote Democrat. It's not a question of really whether they vote Democrat. The question is how many of them will turn out to vote. Barack Obama was really, really good at getting that vote out. Hillary Clinton, not as good. Joe Biden, an improvement on her. But Kamala Harris, is doing better, it seems, than Joe Biden with this demographic. So North Carolina, that could be really, really useful for her there. Let's think about another demographic, one that might be good for Donald Trump, the percentage of voting age population that live in rural areas. And you think this will be good for Donald Trump. Look, the US average here, 21%. All these swing states, five right above it, are in rural areas. And that might be great for Donald Trump. But back to that original big poll number about why it might be useful. So when it comes to rural areas, rural areas is one way of slicing it. But rural areas obviously contain black voters and they contain women voters, for example. And those are two groups that Kamala Harris is doing well because she's doing well across the country. So that big lead there, this is a tide that might really be lifting all those other boats of demographics, of swing states. So we can't tell much from it right now. But underneath that, underneath the bonnet, a lot could be happening. As ever, though, it is too close to call.